All right. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for Faith in Virtual Scouting. Um, I'd like to introduce your producers, uh, your producers, your presenters this morning. Um, Amanda Vogt uh, serves as the Social Media Subcommittee Chair for the National Religious Relationships Committee and is a member of the National Board of the United Methodist Men. Uh, during COVID, she switched her many scouting roles into the virtual world and is here today to share some tips, tricks, and guidelines for putting faith into virtual scouting. Uh, presenting along with her is Cliff Cohen. Uh, Cliff is a longtime BSA volunteer serving in district council, regional, and national roles. He has, current, he has served as staff and director of the United Methodist Scouters Conference and currently serves as the Central Texas Conference UMC Scouting Coordinator. All right. Right. Take it away. So good morning. Uh, today we're going to discuss how technology can help year after year with your programs, but also how it can help you right now through COVID. Amanda is the brains behind this by far. She's exceptionally good at this. I'm a poorly trained monkey who will try to watch the chat room and get your questions over to her. Perfect. Within Zoom, you have two different menu options. Uh, if you're needing to unmute yourself, there's an unmute button there. Uh, and if you're wanting to add in a story, etc., uh, just remembering that we're recording this, there is a raise hands feature. My favorite button of all, it says that you're away from your desk, but I personally call it the I went for coffee button. Uh, <laughs> so as you're doing things, feel free to use the chat feature to ask questions. We'll read questions out loud. Um, but there's ways to participate. So here we go. This session, we're going to go over three different sections. The first one is the BSA social media guidelines. Uh, these are just some guidelines that are there that the uh, national office has developed to help you build a virtual scouting program. Uh, for those that are PowerPoint gurus, I apologize. There's gonna be a lot of words on these first couple slides. That's so that you guys can see the exact wording of these guidelines. Then we're gonna go focus on some specific website reset sources that have these virtual scouting items. Some of them were developed practically overnight in order to help with COVID. And then we're gonna go about building a virtual scouting program, and get into some of the super fun stuff about the faith in scouting. So social media guidelines. So these first ones help with youth protection training. Uh, keeping online conversations with everyone in public places, not an email. When it says not an email, it's not saying that you can never do an email. It's saying when you're doing emails, make sure they're not one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if you're doing an email and a scout happens to email you and they forgot to include a parent, hit re a reply, add their parent as fast as you see that email. That way you're getting out of that youth protection issue the parents know that their kid had emailed you and you're giving the answer back to both of them. Um, if you have emails that are set up so that it emails the entire patrol leaders council or it emails the entire troop, the entire committee, the entire crew, those work great as email groups because then things aren't private. People are all seeing that information. We also do recommend that if you have a troop website or a Facebook group or any social media pages, don't put the, the kids, the scouts, real last name, home phone numbers, school email addresses, et cetera, on the items that are being shared publicly. Uh, that it, it's how people get a hold of their information. If the best thing that we do when I'm working with the venturing age level, so the high school and college age level, we actually will put the home phone or the parent's cell phone number as the RSVP and the parent hands the phone off to their, to their uh, child for all of the under 18 year olds. That way it's adding that extra level of youth protection in there. Okay. If someone sends or shows you an email with any type of a direct message or a wall post with things that are making you feel uncomfortable, trust your instincts. You're probably right to be wary. Don't respond. Tell a parent or a trusted adult what happened. And especially if someone tells you to keep it a secret between the two of you as, as a youth member, tell a parent or a guardian. Uh, as an adult, 
think about this when you're talking to the youth. Add that extra youth to the email. Add their parents to the email. Add the associate scoutmaster or the associate advisor or a den leader to an email. Um, but also watch what you're sending them. If that youth is following through as the webmaster and they've posted the minutes from the last meeting, if they forgot to remove somebody's phone number, don't send them an email in all capital letters that says, you forgot to do this and uh, you, you can't ever post stuff again and everything else. Be kind. Use it as a teaching moment. Bring in that extra adult to have those conversations. Keep it appropriate for their age levels. This one is a good thing for you fan adults. We all tend to use the same password for everything, including our credit cards and banking account information. So don't give your passwords to people. Be careful to whom you talk. Um, anybody that starts talking about subjects that make you uncomfortable as a scout or as an adult, pay attention. If you are talking to someone on social media and they're like, oh, I want to I want to join your your troop or I want to join your crew or your pack. Get a better conversation going with them. Make sure that they really are that age. Uh, see if you can have an adult help you reach out to them. Just be smart about it. Unless you've ever you've talked to a parent about it first, don't talk to anybody by phone if you know that person only online. Uh, it, it's another warning signal. Have that parent there with you. Join it. Have a three-way call, etc. This one you should know from almost anything out there these days. You never agree to meet someone. You've only met online at any place offline in the real world. I want to talk for a moment about youth positions that are beyond the unit level. So for the order of the arrow, your chapter, lodge, section, regional, and national officers. For venturing, your district, council, area, regional, and national officers. This rule gets tricky because you'll be invited to go help another troop with their OA elections, or you'll be invited as a venturing officer to go to an event that's three or four hours away from you. Make sure you have multiple adults on both ends of those conversations that are talking to each other to make sure the event is a really scouting event. So you make sure that YPT is going to be followed on both sides. Maybe you have your parent come with you, even if you do have a driver's license, to be that extra adult. Or your advisor meets you at that location and you know that there's more than one-on-one -on -one situation. So be careful when you're doing those types of activities. Okay, this one works in with the Cyberchip program and especially with right now when we're doing everything so virtually, promise your family member, go through any rules on time so that you're gonna be spending online. Because it's not right now this summer that we're going out and we're camping in a campery field or in a campsite and going to merit badge classes. This is what camp looks like for a lot of people around the country right now. They're camping in their living rooms, in their backyards, in their front yards. And then they're meeting up with the rest of their unit via a laptop or a tablet or their smartphone in different Zoom rooms around the country. So watch as you're doing different things online. It's really good to look at. So I'm going to switch from the youth protection angle now over to some unit guidelines that help to make some good social media items. If you're going to do a website, social media, anything that is public and online, make sure you have monitors or set up ways that if your monitor isn't going to constantly see the notifications all day, every day, maybe you need it to be approved before it goes live. Uh, maybe your troop webmaster needs an adult that gets to just quickly look at it for typos, etc., and then they hit post. Look at things like that to keep it and monitor and make sure that everything's staying up to date, it's relevant, and it's appropriate. Today, there are so many ways that you can communicate with each other that you'll get into a unit and you'll be like, okay, I'm going to communicate this year solely by our website. You always go to the troop website and that's where you'll find out all of the information you need. Well, what if somebody only has access to the website through a little phone? 
or they have to go to the library in order to go and check their website. Look at different channels and maybe you're sharing the same exact information on all of those channels or maybe you're sending out through Instagram or Facebook or WhatsApp or any of the different social media sites a message that's short that says we just updated the website with the information for next week's troop meeting. Log in. So it reminds them to go to the website. Those types of details are always great items. Talk to your audiences and let them talk to you. Have it be a two-way communication street. Post things consistently. Do you always let people know when your meetings are going to be uh, at Sunday at five o'clock, we'll post out the link for the next Zoom meeting. Look at different things like that as you work through things. Especially over these last few weeks, social media takes a thick skin. There are negative conversations that are happening, but now you guys as a unit have a voice in things. With that voice, Watch what's being posted. If people are consistently posting inappropriate things for the audience that is your scouting page, block them. If it's something that there's one negative comment that comes up from a person and you can put a positive spin onto it, correct something they're saying, go for it. Allow that two-way conversation to happen, but keep things positive and keep it from becoming personal attack. Um, you never want somebody to feel like they are being attacked through social media. You also need to realize, and I'm talking to the scout leaders in this one, as adults, we might in the real world be able to put on that hat, walk into the meeting, do all of our scouting stuff, walk out of that meeting, take our hat off, and go do whatever our other hobbies are. On social media, anything that you don't have privacy settings on, it's public. Anybody can see it. So you can't take that hat off and go post a political rant. You can't take that hat off and have a picnic in your backyard that only has red solo cups because if, especially since that song came out, we all think of red solo cups as having not bug juice. Uh, not lemonade in them, not water. So look at what you're posting, especially if you have, if you've allowed scouts that are under 18 to be your friends on these social media pages. So keep an idea on things. That's not saying that you can't have something set for privacy setting and still allow your voice to be shared. We're not blocking any First Amendment rights or anything with it. Uh, you could have a separate account if you wanted to or not allow the under 18 to be your friends. Just look at it, have good, clear conversations going on, et cetera. Amanda. So, yep, that's we what had I was a, a, We had a yep. question come up about a Facebook public page versus a private group. Mm -hmm. uh, cut back as a public page, which can be searched. Parents were uncomfortable with having photos or meeting info posted publicly. They wanted a private group for members only. So you might talk a little bit about private yeah. versus public groups. Yeah, so there's... There's three settings of Facebook groups. There's public, where anybody can join, anybody can see all the information. There's private, where people can click and they can still see the information that's on the wall, but in order to join and be able to post, they have to be accepted. And then there's a group that they slowly are phasing out called secret groups. If you look at BSA publications and guidelines, we say that there's nothing secret that ever will happen in the Boy Scouts. We really don't like having those secret groups because that's where it's much easier to have YPT issues. Um, so you can have group settings where you've set up the privacy settings so you have to be a group to really kind of see a lot of it. You have to be accepted into the group, et cetera. Um, but try to keep stuff public. Um, if it's information you're sharing, but a Zoom link or phone numbers for RSVP and things like that, send them via a group message off of that group. Uh, that way there's still a bunch of people getting it, but it goes through Messenger and the public isn't seeing those email addresses and phone numbers. Okay, here's, here's another one for you. Oh. 
Uh, another organization I belong to has a committee that determines suspensions of various lengths of time from the group's social media for various infractions. Is this a recommendation that would work for scouts? It can be in terms of blocking someone permanently from a group or blocking them from a conversation for a certain amount of time. Uh, I call it the 24 hour cooling off period. If you get an email or something that you'll receive it, let's say at work, so not even in scouting, and you read that email and you're like, oh man, I'm so frustrated. They didn't understand what I'm saying. I just want to reply back and go, what are you talking about? take 24 hours or five hours, cool off, calm back down, and then reply. Sometimes when we get so passionate about a topic, like if I were on here to say, you know, as wood badge creatures, the eagle is most definitely the best creature ever. I have a feeling in about 30 seconds, I'm gonna have a whole bunch of chat messages telling me that I'm wrong. So, Think about those if you're needing to block somebody because our passions have gotten so high. Look at those different items. You can always say, hey, let's just cool off on this subject for a little bit. We're all getting a little passionate. We'll come back around to this tomorrow. An interim you might use too would be where that particular person has to have their posts approved before they can be put forth. And we've had to do that before uh, the United Methodist Church, for those that know, know, has a whole bunch of politics going on right now. Uh, we've had to do that even on my own church page, just to let people calm back down as new documents have come out. Oh, I see the chat's going. Do I have wood badge creature posts going on? <laughs> All right. On those negative comments, we do want to tell the whole story. So allow comments to come up as long as they aren't attacking people. Be prepared to reply if to negative or incorrect information. Sometimes they don't require a response. Others should be taken seriously and addressed. And there is some that you don't even want to touch as a volunteer leader. And I would suggest forwarding them to your council professional and going, how do I reply to this? On some of the subjects, there's even dedicated national hotline phone numbers for people to direct their questions directly to the national office. Uh, the national office is also great on when there's a hot topic that's coming out. They'll provide a frequently uh, answered questions sheet so that as your parents have questions about something, they know how to answer it. Uh, the most recent one that I have seen is the idea of coming out with a diversity merit badge. That has a frequently asked question section as people on social media were starting to go, well, are they going to require this? Are they going to require this? And the national office went, we told people we were creating it, but we're still creating it. We don't know what the requirements are going to be yet. It's still working its way through different committees to actually write it. Uh, so anytime you're confused on topics that come out, especially those hot topics that everybody starts commenting on back and forth, National Office usually has a frequently asked questions document out already or they're working on one. And that goes to this one. Uh, we actually, as a past venturing officer, we were taught, we went through media training at the beginning of our thing about different types of photos to watch as you post them, those types of stuff on social media. But they specifically taught us about this. The hot topic my year was girls going into the Order of the Arrow. This was a decade ago scout leaders and volunteers were asking questions about it and we had to always direct people to the national office because that way we could still be open we could be transparent we could share that information but we gave it all to a single person so that the same type of responses were given around the country any other chat items on these social media areas as the last thing i suggest on it is be scout-like, be kind, be courteous, have a dialogue back and forth, know when you need to disengage from it. All right, hearing nothing, I'm gonna move into our online resource section. So when I mentioned that you shouldn't put people's first and last names on, look at this. I found this one on Google. You can see everybody's first and last names, can't you? 
go into a software program, add black boxes over it before you share screenshots. But that's what a lot of venturing through meetings look like these days is Zoom meetings. Um, in terms of BSA resources for all of this virtual scouting, there are councils across the country that are offering virtual merit badge courses throughout the summer, possibly even continuing in the fall. This is something that we have learned for about, about 58, 59 of the merit badges. They can be taught either fully virtually or partially virtual. Uh, these are ways that now we may even just continue it going into the future on some of these badges so that the more uncommon badges can have scouts from around the country all working on them together. Uh, there's councils that are doing resources called Camp in a Box where they are providing all of the different materials that someone would need for advancement requirements to get up to first class so that when they sit down to their troops meetings they have rope in order to practice tying those knots. They have a small pocket knife to practice whittling and knife safety. Uh, there are virtual classes that are going on on how do you go backpacking and pack a backpack. I'm seeing the chats going crazy again. Do I need to tune in on anything? No, there's a whole lot of um, some sort of wild laugh talking back and forth. Ah, nice. Uh, I knew that wood badge creatures would start up. Um, so virtual classes, they're out there for different topics. A lot of us are using these hashtags, which is the pound symbol followed by some keywords in order to, when we post classes, have them be searchable by people. Uh, scouting at home and scouting together seem to be the big ones that people are using when they're doing merit badge classes or virtual summer programs. Um, the National Campin was actually an event that happened. Uh, so Facebook keeps track by hashtags and interactions and posts and all sorts of metrics on what is the biggest trending topic each day. And they keep track of this for a period of time. The National Campaign had so many interactions, posts, videos, et cetera, going on that they were the fourth largest social event on Facebook in the last five years. And that entire event was put together in two weeks. When all of COVID started and we knew that spring camperies were being canceled, the national office, they all pitched in and councils were sharing videos they could use and they created an eight hour program uh, they even had one of the scouts that was on Master Chef Junior. He taught people how to make lunch. Uh, so lots of different information going on through there. I'm going to exit out and head over towards the internet so that we can actually check out. Here's a, here's a quick one from the chat room. Yes. Our venturing crew members all get a nickname and that's what they use so that no one yeah. uses their real names online or out at public events. And it's fun to figure out a new member's nickname and they have to agree to the one that is suggested. Perfect. We, we did that, um, the college fraternity I was in, Alpha Phi Omega, which is based off of Scouting's principles, they did the same type of thing where everyone was given a nickname. There was absolutely no doubt that my nickname was Scout. Uh, sort of like a trail name. Yep. Uh, mine, was, mine was Wheezing Buffalo and one of my other advisors was squatting dog and we don't need to talk about either one of those. Uh, so this is the National Council Scouting at Home website. Um, they have developed Scoutwire TV where they're actually showing episodes of things that scouts are doing around the country. There's a cool one going on right now out west where a council is getting scouts from around their area and nationally and they've actually created Scout Saturday Night Live type of skits and campfire routines and cool projects that are going on and they share different episodes. So there's all sorts of cool stuff. There's 30 and 31 day challenges for a lot of the different programs where if you follow each of the different requirements throughout that month you've now earned a belt loop or a patch or you're working towards advancement requirements. They have a COVID section where they can they go over different advancement internet safety different activities and stuff. They've got their youth protection reminder. All those guidelines I went through, they're right there. Um, each program is broken out and has helpful articles and ideas. I mentioned that there were 58 badges that they think you can do either fully or partially um, virtual. 
You can find all of those on Brian on Scouting, which is a great blog. If you haven't followed it, I would. It lets you know all sorts of stuff that's happening. It shares eagle projects and all sorts of ideas throughout the year. All right, so that is the national websites page. It'll connect you into all sorts of other locations. Also, go check out your councils page or find the councils that are surrounding you. Uh, there is a council in Ohio, the Simon Kenton Council, that offers hundreds of seats at Merit Badge Universities every single week, all through virtual scouting. So those are items to check out for sure. All right, this could also be what camping looks like today. You're inside, maybe you've got puzzle piece maps inside your inside uh, tent. You've got your fairy lights going on as your lantern. Have fun with it. Um, I had a venturer who their, the crew was doing a camp out and she set up her tent on top of her bed in her bedroom so that she could still sleep in her bed. It was a cute thing and it allowed her to participate and still be comfortable. Yeah, so have fun with camping right now. These three websites, which they're pretty easy to Google search for, um, these three websites all have duty to God resources on them. So we're going to go check those out. The first one is, this is our duty to God BSA website that the National Religious Relationships Committee keeps up. Uh, we'll have our social media links on it, but the one you really want to go to is this blog section. Every one of the classes from yesterday, the recorded sessions are up there, and as you scroll further down, you'll find other helpful articles, uh, ways of helping to promote further scouting, information on training courses. Every time we put out a national newsletter, we'll put those up there. Uh, so duty to God, bsa.org site you're going to want to check out. The other thing that the council or our committee does is we put out a calendar of religious observances and we try to do it out in the future like 2022 is already up. This was actually headed up by a subcommittee of our full committee um, and several members of the Jewish faith volunteered to put together this this calendar for us. They asked each one of the religions if they would submit in the important religious holidays that it would be better if scouting didn't happen on those or that if you had scouts of those faiths, you found a way to celebrate those holidays well at those events. It came back with the Catholics offered 365 holidays because of the number of saints that they would like to celebrate. And we went, well, if there's 365 holidays, how are we supposed to go scouting during the year? And so they narrowed theirs down. And then all the other faith groups, as they were promoting them in, they were handing them all in. The committee chair that created the calendar, he said, okay, I think I have everybody's in. I'm sending it out. Let me know what was missed. Christmas and Easter, every other Christian faith group thought that somebody else had submitted Christmas and Easter. And so surely it was already on the calendar and didn't need to be submitted. So that was the fun joke as we developed this. But we actually, for every month of the year, we list out all the holidays. We give a short explanation of what that holiday is. And then if you want to know more about it, just Google the holiday and you'll be able to find information. The ones that are in red, those are like the super important holidays for that faith group. Uh, so if you are scheduling a council or a district event, pay attention to those dates as much as you can. And if you know you have scouts of those faiths that are coming, find a way to celebrate it while they're there. Okay, and then the last one, this is praypub.org. We have future sessions this week that are gonna go into more depth on this website. But I wanted to point out that if you are a scout leader and you're trying to figure out, um, you yourself are Methodist and you're going, I know that the Catholic faith has religious emblems, but I don't know where to look. They have through their partnership pages, um, information about the different programs. They also have a denominations page that will help direct you to a number of the different denominations. Not all of them are in here, um, but a number of them are so that you can go and find information. I'd also just suggest that you type in scouting and the faith name into Google. 
most of the religious committees are have enough of an active website that Google is going to have their national committee website as one of the first few options that appears. That is that section. Cliff, Susan, anything popping up that we need to? I was just uh, uh, checking the chat right now. There's a lot of conversations going on about um, offerings online and, and these people are amazing that we have in our room here because oh. they're talking about all the things that they're putting on. And Hi. like I mentioned, my, my council is pretty much gone radio silent. So we're, our, our kids are having to go elsewhere to get theirs and we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I do save this chat, so as I have time, I'll go through that and pull out some of those um, and see what else we can help you guys cross promote. Uh, and that's the nice thing about social media is you can cross promote to councils in your own area, councils across the country, et cetera, when we're doing virtual events. Okay, so our next section is virtual scouting. Um, scouting as usual as we can make it. So you do want to, you know, follow those YPT sections, still keep people working on advancement and other things as you go through the spring and the summer. Hopefully by fall, we'll be able to start doing at least patrol size meetings in person. Uh, because there's some stuff that hiking on your own or just or with just your family, it gets really boring. It's having those other friends in your patrol that you can go with and have fun and play in the creeks along the way that makes scouting fun. Um, so a YPT warning, there is a program called Discord. It kind of combines from what I understand video games with chat opportunities. There's too many one-on-one -on -one situations that come up. So we have been asked to not use Discord. Uh, there is another one that has some video gaming in it but it's set up as a server where like everybody is talking together those ones are okay I, um, I think minecraft can do that where you can actually build virtual campsites and stuff in it but everybody can talk to each other there's not one-on-one -on -one situations so those ones are okay to use zoom seems to be the easiest if you have less than 15 so if it's just a patrol leader council or a den or a patrol or the crew officers that are meeting and you know you can finish it in under 40 minutes you can use the free zoom accounts if you have more than 15 devices or your meeting's going to be an hour etc i would recommend the pro account and only one person has to have the pro account they create the meeting link and send it to everybody and everybody else can be on the free account um, for doing this event, we knew we may end up with more than 100, so we actually went up to the business level. Uh, but safety considerations, scouting actually has in some ways gotten Zoom to go to what we like as the default settings for security options. Uh, waiting rooms are now being enabled starting July 15th on any Zoom meeting you are doing, so that you have to hit the admit button like we did. That's to keep out Zoom bombers, as the new term is. Uh, people that aren't a part of your session that come on and they're doing distraction waving and all sorts of other stuff in their video just to be annoying. Um, that helps to block that out. If you're going to be sharing your screen, perhaps you set it up so that only the host, the host or the co-host can share their screen. So there's different security settings you can do. One of them to watch is if you are the host, don't open that waiting room unless you have more than two people sitting in it because otherwise if you let one person in it could be a one-on-one -on -one situation if you're going to use breakout rooms make sure there's adults that are going to all of those different breakout rooms there's also a program called google hangouts facebook now has one and there's multiple other services that are coming up feel free to use those just watch ypt as you do and then think about how often should your unit meet doing this? Or can you set it up where two adult leaders went to a local park and they met a co the couple people from the PLC and they set up a orienteering course and then they sent out the first coordinate to the entire troop and said sometime over the next two weeks, go to this park, practice social distancing, wear your mask if you need to, and complete the orienteering tr uh, trek 
And when you get to the next meeting, we're going to ask you to send us the, the, the letters you found at each station in order to prove you did it. And then we'll check you off on that advancement requirement. So think about how you can do virtual with real life. Okay, so this is part where we're going to have some fun. I'm going to stop my screen sharing because we're going to start talk, talking about how to put faith into scouting, but I want to get all of you involved. So I'm going to send you to some breakout rooms. And what I want you to do is in the group that's in that breakout room, you're going to plan some type of a duty to God, scout is reverent type of an event that can be done either fully virtual or virtual and in real life type of an item. I'm only gonna give you five minutes. I don't need the full details. I don't need an event manual or anything like that. Come up with your idea. What do you think that you guys can do? And it can be for any of the program levels or all of the program levels, your choice. When you come back, we're gonna have one person from your group share that. So everyone understand what you're gonna do. Go brainstorm an event idea in your breakout room. I'm gonna give you about five minutes here's the zoom technology portion of it when i create these rooms a button on your screen is going to appear that says join click the join button when it's time for it to end i'll send out a message giving you guys like a two minute warning i'll actually hit a button and if you can't figure out where the leave this breakout room meeting a button is it'll automatically send you back at the end of that 60 seconds otherwise there is a leave this breakout room don't hit the leave the entire meeting button or we'll have to let you back in because you've gone completely out of the Zoom program. So here we go, brainstorm away and I will see you shortly. All right, so you're finding that join button that's somewhere on your screen and clicking it to go to your breakout room. And if you're having trouble finding it, go ahead and unmute and I can try to talk you through where to find it. Paula, if you wanna go first for your group. Alrighty. Um, so, Nora in our group uh, re was sharing with us that she has really enjoyed watching nature videos. And uh, so we started talking about pairing nature videos um, from her suggestion, pairing it with the Psalms initially. And then we kind of spun off of that was pairing it from segments of prayers and blessings and readings from all the different faiths. And then we kind of spun off of that. And we said we could have a younger or easier setup where it's sort of a match the video to the excerpt or a scavenger hunt, send the kids, to, here's the videos, go to your own scriptures and find something that matches. And so we talked about like, you know, well, we could start with this and then whatever's left, then have them pick from our selection. And we identified resources for that. So we kind of just did this freewheeling thing off the initial thing and boom, we're done. I like it. All right, Diane Z. Okay, I need to share a screen. All right, I think I have it set up that you can. Hang on. Now I do. Okay. Let me put it on the slideshow. Let me get to the beginning. Okay. Oh, that went to the end. All right. Let me stop and go back to the beginning. Uh, exit full screen so I can see it. Well, okay. She's setting that up. If you're one of the other spokespeople, do the raise hand feature. It's it's ready. All right, go for it. Oh, come on. 
Now where's my now where's my zoom? <laughs> okay, let me get get my zoom back up. Share screen. Okay, got it. Okay, share. Okay, so let me put it on slideshow so you can so I can go through it quickly. All right, this is set up for a small pack with multi-level dens. They'll do some, but not all the requirements for all of those things. Got my before the meeting on there. That's the gathering activity. Opening prayer. Opening ceremony, Pledge of Allegiance, Scout Oath and Law. I love that graphic. That's why I put it up there. Uh, 12th point of the scout law, what does it mean? Introduce the scout's own to them, explain them what it was. Then we talked about how to set one up. Now I had sent this information to the parents ahead of time and we kind of like, I have very few at each level, so I kind of like tailored that so that uh, the parents would know what the kids should do to knock off a requirement at their level and, and do, do one of those things. Then we had awards, had a faith skit. I actually found that in an old pack meeting plan. And then they actually did their scout zone. I had to walk them through it, but for, for Cub Scouts, they did pretty good. Uh, Cub Masters Minute also found that in an old pack meeting plan. And there's a, a nice graphic. And the closing ceremony and after the meeting and that was it if you'll do me a favor and if you'll email that to us at duty to God BSA at gmail.com we'll awesome. add that to the Google Drive because I saw a couple people asking how they could get that okay well, we can do that all right who's next I saw, let's go, Elizabeth Brutner. Okay, we were in breakout room number two, and we're going to have a virtual camp out. And I've done a few of those, and I've learned that virtual camp out is not pretend camping. You actually really do it. You're just all on your devices at your camp out site. So we're having a virtual camp out and we're asking that they RSVP so that we know that they're coming. We're gonna have skits and jokes and songs. We're gonna be having foil packs for our dinner. We're gonna make s'mores. And to top it off, we're having the fake the perfect cookie contest. And you make all the fixings and you make it gigantic. So the best, biggest, tastiest cookie, maybe be burnt, we don't know, will win. And that's about as far as we went. We had people from Kansas, Nebraska, um, West Virginia, and Virginia in our breakout room. Awesome. Okay, who else has one? Uh, this is Tom. I can share. Go for um, it. Let's see. Can I share my screen? There's one thing I'd like to share here. Let's yep. see if this works. Um, there we go. Our short-term goal was to actually do a virtual online RP3 from PrayPub. It's where they talk about picture passage, ponder its meeting, and put it into action. And of course, we kind of reviewed the different patches and, and, and things along those lines, and very easy to implement. The longer-term goal was to actually try to put together a virtual Ten Commandments walk, where we would come across, come up with some different scripture passages from different books, ask them to go out and visit the churches, take a video or a, a picture of the church, and then share some of their thoughts as they reflected on those passages. That sounds cool. And that's me. That's it. Awesome. All right. And did I have one more group? Do I have one more group, or was that all of them? Uh, we had one from ours. I don't know if he, he's still on. Um, I think he had to drop off. Tom. Um, we talked about doing a 12-point hike, 
um, instead of calling it a Ten Commandment hike, and he could probably better explain it than I can, but um, the idea was we had talked about getting kids outdoors if we could, still doing something outdoors socially distanced. Um, it might not be visiting faith houses directly that we couldn't get into, but it would uh, be a 12-point a hike, essentially, so. Sounds good. Yep. Do you guys feel like you can figure out how to do virtual and real world and get duty to God going during COVID and meet the year? All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to let people head out so they can get to any of the lunchtime sessions they're doing. So, thanks. thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. Great job.